Hi, my name's Dave Goulson. Welcome back to my YouTube site. Uh, today I'm going to read you an extract from Silent Earth, which is my new book just out in the United States, uh, which is all about insects and how um, amazing they are, how important they are ecologically, economically. And, um, oh, there's one, there's a lovely bumblebee. Uh, and the evidence that they're declining, uh, what's causing that. And most importantly, the book is about what we can all do to help fix this, to make sure there are plenty of insects into the future. So, here we go. Silent Earth, averting the insect apocalypse. Insects have been around for more than 400 million years. Their ancestors crawling from the oceans to colonize the land long before dinosaurs appeared. They've been enormously successful, evolving into a, a staggering diversity of more than one million known species, with perhaps as many as another four million yet to be described by science. There are more than 300,000 different types of beetle alone. I've been obsessed by insects for all of my life. They're amazing, often beautiful, and with fascinating and peculiar lives. What's more, the world wouldn't function without these tiny creatures. They pollinate, control pests, recycle all sorts of organic material from dung to corpses, tree trunks and leaves. They keep the soil healthy, they disperse seeds, and they do much more than that besides. They're also a vital source of food for many larger creatures, such as birds and bats and lizards, amphibians, freshwater fish. It should thus be of deep concern to all of us that insects appear to be undergoing massive declines. In Germany, flying insects have declined by 76% in just 26 years. In the UK, our more common butterfly populations have fallen by 46% since 1976. The rarer ones by 77%, despite great efforts to protect them by conservationists. 13 UK bee species have gone extinct and more look set to follow them. In the USA, the iconic monarch butterfly famed for its annual migration from Mexico to Canada and back has declined by more than 80% since the 1980s. That was a woodpecker. The monarch population west of the Rockies is down 99.9% .9 in the last couple of decades and looks set for extinction within just a year or two. As a child, I vividly remember my parents having to stop the car on long summer journeys to scrub clear the windscreen which quickly became crusted with splatted insect corpses as we drove. Today, our windscreens are disturbingly clean. The data are patchy, since many insects are not carefully monitored. But the data we do have almost all point to a rapid ongoing collapse of insect populations around the world. This mass disappearance has all happened within our lifetime, on our watch. The causes of insect decline are many. Habitat loss to intensive farming, housing and other developments. The ever-growing blizzard of pesticides used by farmers and gardeners. Climate change, light pollution, impacts of invasive species and more. Our tidy pesticide-infused world is hostile to most insect life. Save for the toughest, most adaptable species such as cockroaches, mosquitoes and houseflies. This may all seem terribly depressing, but don't despair. We feel helpless in the face of many global environmental issues, but we can all get involved in halting and reversing insect declines. Most insects have not yet gone extinct and they could recover quickly if we just gave them some space, somewhere to live and feed in peace. If you're lucky enough to have a garden, like me, take some simple steps to invite insects in in North America, the Xerxes Society can provide advice, as can Bug Life or the Bumblebee Conservation Trust in the UK. It's astonishing how much life a small garden can support. 
Biologist and wildlife gardener Jenny Owen spent 35 years obsessively cataloguing every plant and animal that she could find in her modest one eighth of an acre garden in urban Leicester, an area of the UK not famed for its wildlife. She eventually recorded no less than 2,673 different species, 1,997 of which were different types of insect. Britain has about 22 million chainsaws. Britain <laughs> has about 22 million private gardens. The USA an estimated 43 million. Just think how much life they could collectively support if they were all wildlife friendly. Grow a single marjoram plant or cat mint or giant hyssop in a pot on your balcony or roof terrace. And when it blooms, I guarantee that the bees, butterflies and hoverflies will sniff it out. You can feel smug that you've done something to help. Now do something else. If you have no garden, you might consider joining national and local campaigns to fill our urban green spaces with wildflowers or to have your town or village declared pesticide free. Imagine every garden, park, cemetery, roundabout, road verge filled with swathes of wildflowers. We could create a national network of wildlife rich habitat. Wouldn't that be cool? Of course, we cannot forget the bigger issue of how we grow food. It's my view that the move towards ever more intensive farming is unsustainable. It's done terrible damage to our wildlife and soils, pollutes streams and rivers and is a major source of greenhouse gas emissions. UK farmers apply 17,000 tonnes of pesticides to the landscape every year. The figure for the USA is a staggering 450,000 tonnes. It was recently announced by the federal government that 2.6 million acres of Montana rangelands were to be sprayed with insecticides via crop dusters to control native grasshoppers. The collateral damage done to other insects, such as the monarch butterfly, is incalculable. Countless trillions will die. Little wonder that insects are in decline. It's hard for most of us to do much about these farming practices, but we can reduce our own impact and support more sustainable farming practices by buying and eating local, seasonal, organic produce, buying loose fruit and veg and reducing our meat consumption. Better still, we can grow some of our own food in a garden or allotment, pesticide free, of course. Love them or loathe them, we all need insects. Three quarters of the crops, oh, there's a fly on my finger, appropriately enough. Three quarters of the crops we grow need pollinators. We have to learn to live in harmony with nature, seeing ourselves as part of it, not trying to rule and control it with an iron fist. Our survival depends upon it, as does that of the glorious pageant of life with which we share our planet. Thank you for listening. Do get involved and do something to help. That's what it's all about. Thank you. If you're interested in more similar content, then subscribe to my YouTube channel, or you might be interested in one of these various books I've written about bumblebees and other insects and how to look after them in your garden.